Okay, guys, we're just starting the stream. All right. Well, this will be the fourth uh, episode or installment of a conversation with. I've got a real special show for you guys today. I was able to connect with some very longtime friends, uh, Blue and Allison Cotton. I've known them for almost my entire career. Uh, Blue taught me a whole lot about uh, taking portraits. I think we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but before we get started, I just want to remind everyone in the uh, uh, event page for a conversation with. I've started a, a, a fundraiser for No Kid Hungry. We've raised quite a bit of money. I just want to just ask that you guys donate a little or a lot. Um, and then further, uh, Blue is actually a member of the Roosters uh, Foundation, which is a charitable organization. And I think they have 20 um, um, charitable causes that they represent, if not more. Um, so, and then also uh, in the description of this event, uh, there's a link to my YouTube channel. If you guys could check it out, become a subscriber, help me build momentum, um, you know, for what I'm doing here. So essentially, you know, when we went on uh, lockdown, <clears throat> I missed talking to my friends. I mean, I work with people, that's what I do for a living. And I thought, what better way is to sort of reconnect with, uh, you know, some of my my good friends in the industry, and um, you know, have conversations which you know celebrate what they do and what they have done and what they mean to, to me personally. So, um, with that said, if I could, uh, Blue, Allie, you guys there? Yeah, here you are. Hey, hey Hi. guys. How are you? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Happy good. Sunday. We're we're holding our own. Yeah. <laughs> I hear you. So she hasn't told me out yet. <laughs> let me get Facebook going here because I, I I like there's if there's any kind of interactivity um for this. Let's see here. There we go. Because Ali, you and I talked about this a little bit. It's kind of hard to kind of do all these things at one time when you're trying to put this together. Exactly. I mean, you have to let people know you're going to pause to look at your cell phone and <laughs> check, check things on there too. So what's interesting, Allie, uh, I mean, when I first started doing this a couple of weeks ago, I was, I mean, it was, it, it's difficult, you know, because you guys do this. Um, you were so sweet. You called me almost straight away. Um, when you heard that I was having difficulties and you gave me the answer, you showed me how to do this. So I am grateful for your, your help. I mean, not only with that, but you know, always. So thank you, Allie. Yeah. It's a learning process. <laughs> it is. It's a lot of fun. Though. Um, and you actually do a couple of live events yourself. I think one is called wind down Wednesdays. I went, to, I saw one. Tell me a little bit about that. That's that every Wednesday at five o'clock. We uh, this Allison came up with this idea too, and at first I said I don't know if we should do this or not, and she goes you know you've got to show the work that you've done in different countries and across our country, and what we've both photographed, uh, our experience. People want to see that kind of stuff, and uh, kind of get a little bit of an escape from the uh, mm -hmm. lockdown that we've had, and and so what we did we put um, images together from several different trips that we've gone, uh, I don't know which, we, the ones we've done so far have been. Costa Rica, Colombia, Greece, and um, South Korea, and Idaho, right? Which is, go ahead. Go ahead. So th th I know those are very diverse areas, but those are some of the things we've done over the, over the past few years. And uh, this next one's gonna be um, a trip to Napa to uh, uh, several different wineries and, and what we experienced there. So that's gonna be this next, starting this next Wednesday. Did you guys make it out to Sonoma as well when you were out at Napa, in Napa? 
No, we didn't. No, we didn't. No. We didn't at this that that time because there's there's a, about 500 different wineries in that whole area there. So we visited, I think, like 15 of them, something like that, and uh, that took a, a number of time. We were there for about a, a five days. And oh, wow. really, really, really enjoyed it. it was really have you exciting. have you been to Sonoma? Yeah, yeah, that's oh, another okay. area too. Allison has not. No. Oh, no. Allie. So my family, one of the only vacations we ever took was many years ago. And, and there's a fun story about that is um, you know, we, we, were, we went to Napa and it's great. I mean, it's, it's sort of the Disneyland of, of winemaking, so to speak. Uh, but we wanted to get a little bit more out of the way. So we went to Sonoma just on a hunch. We were like, hey, let's try this not too far away. and just fell in love. There was um, like this... Uh, art exhibit it was a, a, a installation where you could actually yeah. walk in i don't remember the name of it but they had this huge chair uh, that you could sit in it was amazing i think it was devastated by the recent fires unfortunately but um my one great memory and i'll find this and post it on on facebook was my daughter saying she was young we were going through cow country i think and she had her hand on her nose or something and uh you know, we were telling her where we were going and she's like, Fran Francisco, that's a fun word to say. It's just so sweet. Um, I'll share that. So you guys know what I'm talking about that's later. That's so sweet. <laughs> when, we were, we, when we visited, we were coming back. Uh, no, we were in yeah. San Francisco one San time. San Francisco. I also has a really quick short story to tell you about. Oh, yeah. so, so with the play on words, um, we had our son who was like three years old and he, mm -hmm. um, we went to the Monterey um, Aquarium. Mm -hmm. And he kicked one of his sandals accidentally off into the ocean. Oh no! So he was devastated, and so I said, "Okay, well, I'm going to write a story. And it's called S Sandal Francisco. And it's about his journey, Sandal Francisco, throughout the waters and what he does. And it helped. Uh, I'm going to still write it someday. Copyright. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it's so so, the play on words. Yeah, that just to brought back memories to, for both of us yeah, with Fisher. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, I, yeah, we got a lot to talk about. We, we'll, we'll get to the images, I promise, guys. Um, <laughs> before we do that, though, uh, you guys canceled this last uh, Wind Down Wednesday, this the, the week prior. Um, just a lot of stuff going on, right? Yeah, it what didn't seem appropriate to um, travel virtually when we had to focus on the uh, events going on here. Just horrible. We wanted to, to, to be in the moment rather than escaping the moment. Yeah. Well, let's and, let's take this opportunity, guys, if you would. Um, let's have a moment of silence, uh, albeit for, uh, you know, George Floyd or any and all, you know, of our fellow citizens that are, you know, struggling right now. I think it's important to sort of recognize um, that. So, Blue, if you guys could go dark for just a minute. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Blue. You guys want to come on back? Sure. I think we're doing it. It's, it's you take a moment just to be present. I know it's disruptive to you know what you know what we're trying to accomplish here, but you know obviously I think being present in the moment and just reflecting, I think it's incredibly important. There's a lot of um, a lot of dialogue going back and forth right now. It's very divisive, and you know one of the things that that and this is all I'm going to say about it. I promise because I want to get onto your guys's story is that you hear the expression, um, you know, Black Lives Matter, and, you know, some of the contrary um, um, conversation about that is all lives matter. And 
on you know face value, it's like, well, duh, of course. But that's not the conversation we're having. In fact, that statement to me illustrates what the real problem is. Mm-hmm. The what I'd like to do is kind of direct the narrative in this way. When you hear that statement or you respond to that statement, whether it be on social media or a conversation with your friends, the only thing that I think is appropriate to say is, you're right, I do. That's it. End of story. Yeah. So that's all I'm going to say. Um, so sorry, guys. No, no. no. We, we, we feel the same as you. Yeah. And, and it just needs to be addressed by all of us across the world. And, and I don't know how we're going to get ourselves out of this, but we need to start somewhere and by talking about it and communicating with each other and, and try to feel a little bit what the other person's feeling. Yeah. And it's yeah. hard to, yeah. hard to do that, especially with the privileges that we have. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, uh, but we all have, uh, can have empathy and sympathy for, yeah. for people. And it's amazing how um, social media and the news is covering this. Cause I was very um, uh, active in my my own head when I was in a small college in Vermont and Rodney King incident and all the riots in LA. And so we were like, fight the power, you know, and, um, and, but we couldn't see except for that one news source from LA. But now you see, I see my neighbors going out in Laguna beach and, and, uh, you know, with, it's just, I, I think it's, um, great that we can see what the whole world's doing. It's, it's empowering. I think Chris Rock made, and again, I don't want to get too far off into this, but I think Chris Rock made like a really uh, impactful statement um, that racism is not more prevalent. It's just being recorded, right? right? And as you mentioned, like on social media, everything's just there. So it's it's not that it hasn't existed. It's just that it's it's become a lot easier to sort of recognize it and see it. Um, so I think we all, you know, whatever we need to do to sort of help this along and in the most positive way possible. So thanks. Uh, wow. Sorry. No. Um, let's, let's let's quickly shift gears. Um, and Blue, let's start with you, if you don't mind. Um, how did you start in photography? I know. I think I know. But um, tell me. Well, I, I've always loved photography uh, when I was a little kid. Uh, growing up, I used to look at National Geographic and all these different magazines and say, you know, uh, I had my reasons for looking at National Geographic. I but I, <laughs> what a magazine! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, but that's what I can. Hey, that's what I got away with, you know. And uh, as as I grew up, as I grew up, I, I picked up a little snap camera, a little uh, Polaroid, and and uh, a little point and shoot. And and I think my first image was my brother diving into a three foot doughboy pool. And it was, just, it's really funny. I've got to find that thing. And that was the first I image I actually that. took. I that scanned. Yeah. yeah. And I think we scanned that. And, and it's, it's not much to do about nothing. I mean, it was just bent over getting ready to dive in a pool, but it was my first one. And so I always remembered that. And when I went into, uh, when I was in school and I, I learned to be a, a pretty decent uh, horn player and played uh, in bands and played in, in different um, orchestras at school and everything. And once I got to high school, out of high school, I decided, you know what, I've been playing this for, you know, 10 years and uh, I don't want to be uh, staying up all hours of the night if I'm going to do this for a, a, uh, for a career. Mm-hmm. I'll be having to go to bed at two o'clock in the morning. I don't know if I want to do that or not. And it's funny that I should say that because mm-hmm. I, I decided that I would, uh, maybe I'll do photography. And I went to Orange Coast College. Did photography. I love the ocean as well. And I said, gosh, you know what? I'm going to take oceanography and I'm going to take scuba diving and I'm going to put all three of them together. And that's going to be my career. It's going to be awesome. And a little did I know that I would um, be involved with so many people uh, uh, asking me to do uh, their social event, their wedding, their portrait. And of course the girls were around too. So that was nice. Um, uh, always wanting to be photographed. Uh, and when I was young, uh, anyway, so long story short, I went to college there, and then uh, I started doing um, uh, photography for a a guy that did um, sorority and paternity images, Ugh. photography. Yeah, and it was it was a tough job again. I had to do the sorority at UCLA, USC, Berkeley, Santa Barbara, Arizona, blah blah blah, all these different places across the the uh, 
the states and uh, enjoyed that for a number of years. And then I, uh, more and more people asked me to do uh, social events for them, like their wedding or that kind of thing. And that was all film at the time. And uh, then uh, I finally, finally uh, started doing my own thing. And I had a uh, full-time job plus photography plus working for this other guy. So it was pretty strenuous for years doing a lot of, a lot of variety of different things to keep my income coming in and enjoying, you know, what I do. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and then, then of course I used to go to uh, these different conventions in Las Vegas and, uh, and different parts around the world for photography. Uh, and that's where I met some, some hottie, hottie over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's where we met and and fell in love and long distance. We we're uh, uh, dated long distance. She's from New Hampshire, and I obviously it was in California, and uh, we dated so two blue, years. Real quick, blue. Yeah. You do yeah, realize yeah. you married up, right? Of course, of course. <laughs> okay. No argument there. <laughs> so that's what I said. we kind of got together, and, and uh, obviously I did a lot of variety of other things. Did a lot of travel photography. And uh, mostly with people, though, because I really love people and enjoy working with people. Um, uh, and it, it is exciting to see their expressions when I can pull from them who they are when I open up who I am. Mm -hmm. So that's 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 probably how Allison and I uh, got together uh, and, and our relationship built from there. Yeah. You guys met, I think, at a trade show, right? Was it WPPI or something yeah. like that? Yeah. yeah. WPPI, yeah. and then we'd see each other at the next PP of A. Um, you know, and, and so we long distance and, uh, the, with the time change, I remember it was before all the social media, but I would, our DC weddings would last later. So I would get out like at 2 AM and then Blue would get out at 11 PM on his California wedding. So like we get home at the same time and call each other and compare notes about the weddings Aww. we shot. Yeah. So and I remember seeing you guys at WPPI a couple times. I worked at, my company sent me there this last year, which was ironically just before we had to close the facility down, um, you know, due to COVID. Uh, it was kind of a shadow of what it had used to have been, you know, like what it used yeah. to be rather. Um, you know, it, it just, it, it wasn't the same at all. Um, you know, obviously the industry is going in a different direction, I think, uh, especially yeah. because of COVID, which we'll talk about a little bit. But Louie, or Blue, Allie, we can't forget about you. I mean, you come from a dynasty of uh, photographers. How did you get started? I think it was... Kind of, well, I don't want to say, how did you get started? Oh, that's all right. Um, Hanover, New Hampshire, my, um, my grandfather had a studio and he photographed some amazing celebrities like Norman Rockwell and some presidents. And um, my dad and my uncle both carried the tradition and my aunt actually was the retoucher. So the whole family was in it. They had a studio. And then um, my dad and my uncle took over the business. And then my dad solely took it over and trained my mom. Mm -hmm. And so when I was growing up, we had a dark room in our house and my dad just loved the fact that I had an interest for photography. He gave us all cameras like uh, 127s, was it? Is that 127 yep. film? 126? 127 film, 127. Um, Kodak 127. cameras when I was in kindergarten. So my, fir my first photos, I remember, were photographing um, my kindergarten class learning how to brush their teeth. So we're all, you know, the teachers by the little <laughs> sink and we're, she's brushing her teeth and I just love those images. And so I just kept shooting and shooting throughout and documenting my life throughout going on the yearbook. And, and then I went to uh, Linden State College for a graphic design degree. Uh, mm -hmm. Then I went to Hallmark Institute of Photography um, for a photography uh, degree. So I learned a lot more than my dad taught me a lot, but then I also learned um, different concepts that I didn't learn from my dad and business and whatnot. And then from there, I was introduced, I went to a convention and was introduced to some amazing photographers like Al Gilbert, Hanson Fong, um, uh, uh, Monty Zucker, Ed Pierce, Clay Blackmore, all those old school photographers who were just, um, just incredible. That like you're saying with the, con the conventions now, mm -hmm. it's not the same. Um, and so then I was introduced to Clay Blackmore, uh, adored his work, and Monty's Real work. quick, Allie, I'm sorry to interrupt you. So I, I know Clay Blackmore as well, and, and I saw him, I don't know if it's this WPPI, but maybe it was the last one. I'm working the show. He is one of the most genuine, kind people I think I've ever, of his caliper, you know, people, he's, he's a celebrity in our industry, and he's just such a sweet, sweet man. 
Yeah, so, he really is. And, and that's what attracted me to him with his work is he was just, and he, he was so passionate about what he did and he um, tried new ideas and he would just try it and do it and just uh, break so many boundaries. So I um, ended up um, moving down to Maryland, working for the Naval Academy, photographing for them, just so I could get closer to Clay's studio in Maryland. Mm -hmm. Basically, I stalked him and <laughs> I got a, um, a job working with him and I worked with him for about um, five years. And through his studio, I went on conventions with him and met this guy who won so my- I, I fell in love before she did, obviously, right? <laughs> so she told me later on uh, that what made her fall in love with me is when she saw me spinning one of these little photographer, one of, one of these photographer kids. Hen, hen, um, uh, uh, John Henry. John Henry's John Henry, kids yeah, from uh, Hawaii. Friend of ours from Hawaii. Um, he had his wife and kids there, and I didn't have any of the kids with me at, at, at the time with me at that convention. Kids, yeah. And so she saw me, you know, I, I don't know if you've ever done that with your kids where you swim around. And, oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. She saw me having fun with the kids and laughing and giggling. And uh, anyway, that's. Yeah, that's what um, I was like. Hey, that guy is pretty cool. Just the, your character and your personality. And, and so we actually got together, and I realized. I came out to visit him or we we plan on getting together moving into each other with each other and then I realized I've never seen his photography work because that's before like like really the websites yeah we did so when I came out to California and I saw your work I was like oh my gosh good he's a great photographer too you know mm -hmm. I, 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 <laughs> I was like, I would have made a huge mistake if I married some schmo with, with a, yeah. no talent. I was going, what are you talking about? Come who, on. Who only shot with an 80 millimeter lens on a Veronica? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> you guys are um, totally. You know, we, we had so many fun, exciting, just incredibly amazing times together when we were dating and when we she moved to California. We traveled. To the Philippines, we traveled over Europe. We 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 taught different taught locations, and, and, and we caught taught in Las Vegas, and and uh, so yeah. many different fun, exciting things we did together. And you know, Blue, I think that that would be a good transition to maybe start looking at a couple of photos. I'm going to pull one up, and um, you want to talk about it? Cool. Sure. Sure. All right. Give me just a minute. Got to get my iPad here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys doing okay? Yeah, we're doing great. All right. So this this image yeah, that I'll pull up here in a second, um, I think it helps illustrate, Allison, your point, which is Blue's a wonderful photographer, number one. But number two, he's a wonderful human being. And he's, like, when I worked with Pretty you red. guys. Um, I already am red. <laughs> but when I worked with you guys, the um, – the level of interest that you um, you know had with your subjects and how you engage them was you it is unique. I mean, it's like distinctly blue cotton. So let me let me pull this up here. That's kind words. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> this was a this was an amazing time in Colombia. Uh, to tell you a little bit about this image right here. Um, while I was there for a different reason, I was there for children's, uh, we, were, we were opening a, a, a computer data center for some kids at uh, a local school in one of the cities there, and I was invited to go down and photograph that. Well, this was a side trip to a small town in, uh, in Colombia uh, by a desert. This is actually a, a, an image that I was, standing across the street and I saw these guys all hanging out and they're getting kids hanging out waiting for a uh, triathlon that was happening that day. And they were talking and just having a good time. And I caught their attention and I just sit, I, 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 I waved to them first because I was, I guess, again, across the street. And uh, uh, I, I said to myself, you know, I got to photograph these people. It's just amazing. And so what I did was after they took a picture, there's another image of them just sitting there looking at me. And uh, I just go, muchas gracias, señor, yeah! I, I went like that <laughs> to them. And they all jumped up and they were like, yeah, they really, really reacted to my kindness to them. And right after this image, I went closer and 
closer to them. And I'm, I don't think we have the, those images here, but I did individual uh, 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 portraits of many of them there and uh, they really responded uh, really. Yeah. This was a really great, great guy. That's a great Really photo. enjoyed him so much and just, I mean, he's so much character in their faces. So, so that's too, but not everybody possesses the ability to do that, Blue, and it's, um, you know, kind of often overlooked and, you know, to be a, to, in my opinion, to be a successful photographer, you know, you, you, you want to show, you know, various aspects of people's personalities, but, um, you know, your, uh, your ability to, to, to be able to pull happiness out of people is uh, pre pretty impressive. And I've, I've worked with quite a few people in the industry. So, um, and so let me um, see here. Hold on. What's going on? Yeah, it's been just an incredible career over the past 40 years, being able to relate to someone that is like a, a busboy, thanking him for helping us at, at, a, at a restaurant or speaking to a president of the United States, or speaking to a corporate guy, or speaking to a baseball player, or a celebrity, and treating all those people in the same manner as I want to be treated, that I want to be treated, and not kissing anybody's ass, yeah. but, but making sure that they know that I'm open to them. And that's why I've always been my whole life without photography. Yeah. just being able to talk with people and part of this because we moved around the world together my, my parents and I my dad was in the military mm -hmm. and, and and you had to be open or or you just be a recluse so it's either one one direction or the other and it was not too much in between which is kind of a neat segue let me bring this image online um, and we were having difficulty with how it was being shown I hope it shows full screen for everyone that's yeah, pretty close how is it doing on the other? Oh, I don't show in about 20 seconds. Well, this, uh, I'll start talking about it and maybe we'll see a little further of them. Anyway, uh, this gentleman uh, was in Lo in uh, San Francisco. We were up at, uh, had done a- Yeah, it's uh, showing full screen. Was this one we went to, to do Hanson Fung's wedding before this? Uh, yeah, we were, we were going, we went up to Hanson Fung's so, wedding. So we went up to Hanson, Hanson Fung, who's also thing. an amazing photographer. Oh, good. Yeah. An amazing photographer. Very, very dear friend and mentor of mine went and photographed, uh, helped photograph his wedding. Um, uh, on our own, we did some extra images. There was a lot of photographers doing that. Well, afterwards, uh, we were around the, uh, the city and we took Fisher, who was, was about 10 years old at the time, I think. No, he was he was like three. No, he's old. Yeah, he was three or four. Was he? Yeah. Well, wow, time flies. Anyway, uh, so we were taking him around town and, and this was on... Um, uh, What's that circle? Main, the, that circle? The main street there, I can't think of the name, Na Nation, National, National, I, I'm not sure exactly where it was, mm -hmm. uh, the name of it, but I saw this gentleman uh, in a wheelchair, and I thought, my God, look at this guy. Such character. And th th such character in his face, and I imagine this man has a story to tell. So what I did is I, he didn't even know I was taking this image, and I was a, using a 200 millimeter lens, and I shot this at full 200. So I was quite a, quite a bit back from him. And I started feeling guilty about photographing him without his knowing. And I said to myself, my son is standing here. And I think he might've been about five years old at the time, five or six. So he could understand a little bit like what I was about to do. And I said, hey, Fisher, you want to go meet a pirate? And this was the time where, where he was talking. Oh, he was into Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, and he used to call himself the Pirate King, Fisher, and dress up like a pirate all the time. Well, you know, obviously, it wasn't at this time. So we, I photographed him, this gentleman, and I said to myself, I can't do this without talking to him, without finding out who he is. And I walked up to him, and I introduced myself and introduced Fisher, and I said, to Fisher, I said, I introduced you to a real pirate, told the guy, and the guy smiled, big smile on his face, and I started talking about who he was, where he came from, and what he was doing here, and he uh, was a uh, Vietnam veteran who had lost his legs and uh, was on the street for many years, um, uh, but what a character he was, and I got a chance to talk to him and who he was, and then I asked him, I said, can I, would you mind if I, you're such an interesting character, would you mind if I uh, take a portrait of you? And so this shot, he's looking directly in the camera and you can see the intenseness in his eyes and you can see all, all the, 
the, the lines and the, and the wear and tear and the tattoos and everything. And to me, this was such a dynamic image. It, it spoke to me so much. And for me to be able to, to talk with him, I must have talked maybe 15, 20 minutes. And Fisher was totally intense, believe it or not, at six years old. Listening to him, his his stories, told us a few stories. Very soft spoken. And very gentleman. soft spoken. Didn't you would think that he have a real rough, gruff voice, and he didn't have that. He's a very soft spoken man. And at the end of this, I said to him, I said, you know what? I know that you need things. You need probably need some kind of support, and you didn't ask for a thing. But what I want to do is I want to give you enough money to have at least lunch. Here's a twenty dollar bill. I, and he wouldn't take it at first. And finally, I go, no, take this. Please have lunch on me. I, I, I took something from you, a, a beautiful image from you. And I want to give you something back for it. Uh, I, I just want you to have at least lunch on us and enjoy the rest of your day. And thank you again. And to me, that meant so much, so when, much. To, when when to we go. first started talking about this photo, um, one of the things, like not this photo, but the one prior when, you know, you're photographing them at a distance, one of the things you share with me, I hope it's okay to, to you know, share this online, um, is that you were obviously, we, you know, as photographers, uh, we're in some respects lawyers. Um, you know, we document, you know, the world around us. Uh, we're, if you're in public, you're well within your right to photograph, you know, people on public property. And you were doing that because it was, you know, something that was interesting to you. But um, what impressed me, and I think is really cool, is that you wanted your son to know what it meant not to be a voyeur, but to engage with your community. And that's what kind of allowed for that, that, that last shot and bring it back online if I can, uh, which is just so striking. I mean, it's God, the level of detail and the light in his eye is just amazing. But also one thing that you said too, that I, I, I thought was very interesting is he had uh, you know, soft, he was soft spoken, you know, he's a gentle person. It's these perceptions that we have of folks that are, you know, down on their luck or, or whatnot, that they're gruff and, you know, and, and all that stuff. So I think it's, it's, it's very important that beyond just the image itself being striking, um, you know, that's awesome. It's just really yeah, cool. Yeah, it, it was a beautiful song. And, and, and I, this was a couple of years, several years ago, Fisher's 13 now, so. I felt like it was yesterday when I photographed this. It just it has meant so much for me over the years. Um, and I have many other images of a variety of different people like that, but this one in particular meant so much to me. Yeah, that is very cool. Um, so you've got a couple other pictures, but Allie, I want to I wanna get some stuff up there for you. Um, where would you like to go? Uh, throw up a photo. Let's see what we can yeah, okay. what you, what you we choose. <laughs> yeah, um, I think this th these will be fun because I've seen pretty much every single one for every single yeah, I'm gonna pick up one that's that I like okay I mean not that they're not all great but um let's let's go here <laughs> uh, tell them about that Allie so um we started photographing unique Christmas cards uh, uh back um probably about 17 or 18 years ago and um, when Fisher was born, it was fun because then we could incorporate uh, the three of us into a fun new um, moment every year for our Christmas cards. And you see, I love Christmas cards. I love family photos. I keep those cards uh, from relatives and friends. But I wanted to do something. We wanted to maybe, being photographers, to also use this as a marketing piece and a stand out because we do family photos all the time. So when can we do something fun and silly and catch people's attention yeah, it, you know, around the holidays and make them smile and laugh. So uh, this was one of our, what we do is we think of a theme every year and we all vote on it. <laughs> and we, we have Fisher and I voting our vote and usually together. And then Allison uh, overrides. Override she does, it. She does yeah. what they call a over. Uh, yeah. You know, anyway, My vote is worth five votes. So, so. Um, <laughs> we've got a few so people this on. Year, Go ahead, okay. Allie. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Say hi. Say hi to yeah. a few people. Hi, Mike Moore. Lisa. We've got, Lisa. We've got a few people online. Uh, my friend Nick Cirillo's back. He's watched every, oh, I think, every single one of our episodes here. Um, really great friend of mine. And uh, my wife, uh, obviously, she's online as well. Apparently, I have my dog coming down. So, 
<laughs> yeah, her dog was over here scratching yeah. my leg. That's Dodger in the middle there. Yeah. This year we we just got Dodger. So this year the reason why we did Wizard of Oz is because Dodger simply was a Toto. And so we based this photo around Dodger and collected the costumes. And I grew up my hair and I actually colored it for this shoot. And Fisher is appearing twice. He's both the lion and the scarecrow, the magic of digital. You know, we incorporated that. And I love this one. I love Flu's. And we had a great makeup artist um, who's Arisa, who was just amazing, helped us on many shoots. And she helped make this happen too. And a Allison did all of the artwork on here. I have to give her that, that amazing credit. She got the background. Uh, and, and composited. And composited there. That's not a green screen. She composited it in there. And I love the fact that Fisher has so much he's expression so and every year he's done work with us on christmas cards he has so much expression on everything i think he really makes the card he's most a temperamental lad yeah so with that yeah. with that because you got tons of them i'm gonna i'm gonna pull up another one let's just chit chat about that a little bit <laughs> there there we go tell me about that Alan. how do we i forgot how we got the theme of wizard of oz i mean that was Roz, oh, no. um uh charlie and the chocolate Char factory yeah. But this was great because Fisher was at a perfect age to be little Charlie, and um, he had so many expressions. So when we made him the Oompa Loompas, he really stole stole the, the show, image. Yeah, stole the show. And I told Allison for this particular image, I, I was complaining. I'm the one, always the one who had to wear all this makeup, makeup, and 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 stuff all over. I said, you got to, we got to pick out one that you, you, you know, you're not looking your very best with your big old smile on you. So she goes, okay. <laughs> she goes, I'll be a blueberry. Uh, yeah, so I think she likes to torment you a little bit, Blue. <laughs> uh, let's go with one more, uh, Ali. This one I think you spent a lot of time on. I love oh, this, one. Yeah. this was because uh, every year I kind of, we, we, we think about the, what's going on in the world too. And this was the year of the um, election. The, the election in two, 2016. And it, uh, so I decided to go back in time and we created this image. And this was really fun because the flag that I'm holding, I got a, um, from uh, Brooks Nooks, which is in uh, Gettysburg area. I was at a convention and she had this, I think it was, I don't know how many stars are on it. Is it, is it 1800, 19 something? It's an old flag. It was found in a barn in, in it's Civil War time. Yeah. Of course, um, so, so this was really cool to incorporate the flag in there. And then the image as, is the, um, from Philadelphia and from Gettysburg. So that's really a lot of uh, true shots that we, we took back east. And then um, just kind of incorporated. Fisher was so perfect as Ben Franklin with his crazy. Um, <laughs> crazy expression. <laughs> with the key. And, and then I, it was fun because we had a serious one first. And then Blue said, we can't be serious. We're just too, we're not, we're not doing serious this year. This year is too serious as yeah, it is. Yeah. So we, um, we did a, just a silly shot. And I, I love it. Yeah, that is great. But, um, you know, obviously it takes a lot of effort and timing and or, or time, I should say, uh, to get those together, uh, you know, because you have to, you know, conceptualize and then execution and then print and then send them out to everybody. And I'm grateful because I get those cards every year and it just, it tickles me. Um, they're, they're wonderful, Allie. Um, so aside from, you know, the, the traditional work that you guys do with events, um, you know, events, weddings, corporate work, all that fun stuff. You have, I'm going to call it your passion projects, but you do what you call your chameleon shoots, right? Yeah. Yeah. I do chameleon shoots and that's kind of, um, I guess I had so, so much fun during our, um, doing our holiday cards that I said, I want to dress up every day. So uh, <laughs> it's, as a kid, I love. She dressing. doesn't dress up every day. No, my, my mom had well, a barrel. She gets dressed every day, but not dressed up in some of the things you're going to see. <laughs> my mom had a barrel full, when I was a kid, a barrel full, full of dresses. So as a little girl, you'd play dress up. You'd go into the barrel and wear mom's old um, prom dress and, and things like that. And so as an adult, I thought, you know what, around Halloween time, I think it was one year that I, I thought, I'm going to buy a wig and I'm just going to start photographing myself with this wig. So my wig collection now is a hundred wigs. Don't oh tell Blue. Oh my God, Allie, come I have on. hundred wigs. They're collected she from- She spilled the beans the other day and I was going, are you kidding me? They're all for <laughs> the money you spent on those things. No, I get them from, like they're used too, which is kind of scary also. 
going to like a, a used clothing store around Halloween, you can collect mini wigs. And um, so I started doing um, basically chameleon shoots where I can transform myself into other characters and create scenes similar to our Christmas cards, but doing it with um, basically either as a prop, a location, or a, a, um, an outfit that creates that um, concept. And then I roll with it. So can, can, can I pull one that I like a lot? I mean, I like them yeah. all, but this one that when I was looking at your images, when you sent them over, um, I was like, oh my gosh, what a striking image. So tell me a little bit about, I mean, just, gosh, that's phenomenal, Allie. Tell me a little yeah. bit about like, what, what's in your head? How did you, how did you come up with this? So, um, <laughs> When I told Blue this, he's like, don't tell anyone, this is how you got it. I was working out on an elliptical and I was near Blue's fishing stuff and I accidentally knocked some lobster goop on me, right? Your lobster goop that you catch lobsters with, it's that scent what, of a what, lobster. What it is, is it's, a, it's a scent that you put on your trap to attract, to attract lobsters. For lo lobster, and uh, I was sitting on the corner and it smells so bad. Oh my gosh. I got it it's on so me. Potent. Yeah, I got it on me and then I worked out and I'm like, Oh my God, I smell like lobster. And then I took a shower and I'm like, I still smell like lobster. And I thought, wouldn't that be awful if I like went to the beach right now and all the lobsters came after me because I smell like lobster. So basically that's how this concept started. I watched a video by, um, um, da -da 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 -da, um, set adrift on memory bliss by you, PM Don. Mm -hmm. And there's one scene that they do quick where it's kind of a similar feel to this, where these girls are all like in a little kaleidoscope. And um, I went online, I bought this rubber lobster from Amazon. And I thought, what if I did a little dance just like that kaleidoscope I saw briefly on that video. So Blue was a great um, photographer for this. We went to the Huntington she made Beach me, Pier. Yeah. She made me go down to the Huntington Pier. <laughs> and uh, I said, I, I got, honey, you, you can see what she's wearing, right? The dress, the red. The dress and the hat and everything else. So she definitely stood out amongst the uh, the locals there and uh, so I said why don't you go or she said I'll go down to the bottom and you use your camera on the top and shoot, and shoot down on him and I on did me. this yeah. in pieces and so she would I'd take an image like the one on the very bottom and I twist and then she twist and take another one on, on the other side and then she twist the other way and, <laughs> and, and I'm taking these pictures of her thinking to myself oh my god I hope these come out decently Anyway, she put the whole thing together, and that's what the final product looked like. I love. I mean, I, I bet people thought you guys were bonkers. Yeah. Like, who yeah. are these people? What are they doing? My husband. Um, thinks, I'll walk through the house with a wig on, and my son and his friend are like play, gaming in their room, and the friend looks up at me like kind of weird, and then Blue just. I mean, Fisher just looks up and looks back down. You know, my, I'm. I. It's dress, just mom. <laughs> yeah, it's just mom. The other, and the, other night, the other night, she was in the bathroom for a while. <laughs> well, yeah. Let's, I'm gonna open up another night. one. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Real quick here, guys. Hang on. This one I really like too for a couple of reasons. But uh, where's it at? Okay, here it is. Like, what? What is going on here, Allie? So, so this yeah. one uh, started from um, I was we we were on a baseball team. Fisher was on a baseball team. Our son and there was this cute little kid, and he was like bad news bears. He was he was learning. He was a little bit uh, starting out fresh compared to all the other team members. Oh, he never played baseball No, before. and he was so cute. I loved him so much. And so it was the last night, there was a pizza party and all the kids are playing video games and he comes in with the front part of this palm. Apparently it fell off a tree outside the pizza place and he's holding it up like a mask and he's so cute. And I just look at his mask and I'm like, I, I, I need that mask. So it's like, hey, Joseph, when you're done, can I have that? Can I have that palm? Because I'm like, oh my God, this is so neat. So I went home and we had found this other, I think I found this other back yeah, there's palm. A, yeah, there's, there's two palms. Yeah, the back, okay. back piece I found when I was walking oh, the dog. So I dragged I the back it. piece home. So I hung the back piece behind she me. She found that back piece two blocks away from our house and came, I mean, this thing is huge from a huge palm tree. And uh, it, uh, she brought it home. As I'm walking the dog. Walking, I'm walking the dog with his big frond. <laughs> Uh, walking down the street and then walked in the door and I'm shaking my head what are you doing now and uh, of course it. she knew what she was doing you so, can see so yeah so I image. wanted to I love the feel of you know the from um, what Princess Bride or Shrek you know the the Prince of Palm and that's so that's a character I created and um, 
I just love it. And I, it's got a cool little backstory just about me stealing this poem from a little kid named Joseph. Uh, yeah, I just, I love the warmth of that image. And um, it just, it, it is very, I would call it regal. And I think that's what you were going for. Yeah. Um, what a cool shot. <laughs> um, here, let's. Let's keep going here. Let's, uh, I'm going to find one. Isn't this fun, guys? Yeah. I love, I love talking about your guys' work. Thank There's you. never a dull moment in our home, I'll tell you that. Right <laughs> uh, well, we talk a lot about Fisher, and it's so funny because, uh, Blue, you know, uh, you spend a lot of time on the water. I spend a lot of time on the water in different capacities. I'm on a paddleboard. You're, you're actually on a proper boat, you know, fishing. <laughs> um, but every time in Newport, there's a, and I think I told you this, there's a big boat called the King Fisher, and I always think of your son every time I see that. So, yeah, we named our we named our, our we have had uh, three or four boats, and every one I've named it uh, uh, King Fisher. So we've had, and I told matter of fact, have, tell the story what happened with Bob Fisher actually. Um, being being uh, when he was being, born, we couldn't oh, yeah. figure out a name. We kept arguing back and forth about what the name was going to be for our son. And Allison would come up on a name, and I about a name, and I go like, "Are you kidding me? There's you no way." You wanted to I'm... name him the guy from what's the guy from Friends? Uh, I can't remember. What's that. one of the characters from Friends? I don't know. Anyway, I, I doesn't matter. I wanted to name a, na a name for her, and she was not. We're not doing that. And then she would come up. I with wanted a name Brooklyn and go, Bridge. And I'm going like, "Are you kidding really? me? Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah." She's coming up with these really goofy names. I go, "There's no way in hell we're going to name our kid that." And so uh, I go, "Why don't we name him Fisher?" And, and all of a sudden she lit up. She goes, yeah, can, after the boat, yeah. let's name him after boat. Because we had a boat called King Fisher. And she Fisher agreed. King boat. Yeah, yeah. Fisher, Fisher King so, Cotton. Then we changed here. it. To Blue Let Cotton. me get your yeah. guys' your, your interact. What, what are you guys doing with your son there? <laughs> he's so funny. Oh, he's so great. So uh, this is, this, go ahead. Shout out goes to David Salon. David, um, Fisher would just get his hair cut. And he's such a cute little kid that David's like, hey, you want to do something? And so David, after his haircut, would actually... Um, well, this was before he cut it off. No, this, he, he came home after, Oh, yeah, it was it. after, yeah. He I his had longer hair at the time. He trimmed and, it. And uh, it was real curly and, and really cool looking at the time. And uh, so the... So Fisher lets him do weird things with his hair. I love it. And then he did, um, he flattened it one year, and it would look like Oliver, Cousin <laughs> Oliver from the Brady Bunch. <laughs> So, yeah, uh, this, yeah particular, I love this particular one he had for I think he had the, that entire day and the part of the next day. Excuse me. And, and then, took some cool shots. And, and so I thought I had a I had a pair of shades I put on him and and uh, I thought that was pretty. A little model. He's he's quite the uh, character. <laughs> Always has that's been. Awesome. That's awesome. Um, where would you guys like to go, or do you want me to pick something? You um, choose. I choose. Yeah. Speaking of fish, you want to want to go with that? I mean, what do? We want to go that image that I took of him um, at his grandmother's. Um, oh yeah. So he was extremely close to his uh, yaya, and uh, she passed away at 91, I think it was. She, it's been several years now, and this is the last uh, moment that he. Uh, we were actually sitting in a limo, and he was looking out the window and. Um, he was looking at the church that we were leaving that he had just seen her for the last time. And uh, it's met so, I, I just, there was only image that I took that day. And I was, I, I, Allison I think had the camera, she had taken some images mm -hmm. that day and we had another photographer there just because we wanted to remember the day as well. And uh, I said, let me see your camera. And uh, I just said, Fisher. And he just looked over at me and with his eyes and it was, such an emotional moment in my, uh, when I see this image, sometimes it's very hard for me to hold back the tears because he was so close to her and, and he, he missed her so much and was so sad that day. And you see, there's no smile on his face. Just those, those eyes of his were mm -hmm. penetrating and uh, just a beautiful image of him in, in a moment in time. And I've always cherished this image of Fisher and the last, um, it's called last, last um, moments with uh, Nat, uh, Yai. Yeah. You said what? Yaya? Yeah, we yeah. call her Yaya. She's Greek. That's Greek. That's Greek. Greek. Mm -hmm. She's Greek. And uh, and uh, again, they were super close. And um, 
it was well, an think, emotional moment. You know, what's interesting, I mean, Blue, obviously it's your mother, um, his grandmother. Um, he's young, obviously. Um, he hasn't known loss at that point, I'm assuming. Oh, no. So yeah. this is, uh, you know, kind of a very meaning, I mean, it's obviously a very meaningful image, but a very meaningful time in his life. Um, he's such a wonderful kid. Gosh, Allie, I remember when you told me you were going to have a baby. I was like, oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, 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 that time in life, boy, I'll tell you, is such a precious time with your children. You know, I mean, their, their innocence and their uh, jovial craziness. And, 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 you know, you don't want to kill them because they're not 16 and 13. <laughs> he's 13 now, so he's got the point where sometimes you want to throw him in the pool and keep him under. <laughs> but but back, back then, it was just, just amazing how, how um, I caught his soul at that moment. You absolutely did. Now, I'm going to just remember something. <laughs> uh, Blue, I've known you for a long time. Uh, yeah, my son, yeah. I think, was a baby when I first mm -hmm. met you. Remember yeah. that, Allie? Yeah. I remember when he came in with his, um, he was into Peter Pan. Yes, yes. He's, He's going Peter to graduate Pan school in a couple there. months. That's amazing. It's just amazing. You so you should be so proud of him. Oh, I am. In yeah. fact, I asked him if he would sit down with the conversation before he leaves because you know he's going to go to graduate school in uh, in New Orleans, not New Orleans. In uh, oh my gosh, I should know this. Uh, anyway, he's going to be in um, Louisiana. Gosh, what is this? Oh wow! Hey, Fred. Oh, he. Where is he going to school? Louisiana State. Oh, he's going to Louisiana State, Baton Rouge. Oh, that's right. Wow. Sorry. That's great. I just had a moment there. <laughs> <laughs> we are getting awesome. older now, huh? Yeah, yeah we are. Yeah, we are. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a senior brain fart. <laughs> okay. So, Blue, you love the water. You, uh, you've you brought me on the boat a couple times, and I'm, I'm grateful for that, although I think I get a little bit too seasick when I'm on the boat. <laughs> I love your images of, uh, you know, just... Here, let me just pull one up. Just tell me a little bit about that, if you would. So uh, it's funny uh, that I had been uh, trying to fish most of the day. Uh, this was in, I think, uh, November or December, and I was trying to fish most of the day out there in Long Beach, which has nothing to do with this picture because I came in, I was pretty upset that I, I, I didn't get a bite. I mean, it was just like one of those days where they just wouldn't bite. I couldn't get them going. Mm -hmm. And I got off my boat there. Uh, my boat was uh, in the slip there in Long Beach, in the marina there. And I got off, and I was so intense about not catching the fish. And oh my gosh, I'm tying up. And I stood up and I looked up, and oh my God, what I saw in the sky brought tears to my eyes. And this image was after that day of not catching fish. And I, I stopped for a second, and I said, you know, my gosh, look what I have to be. Why am I complaining about stupid things when I've got such beauty in front of me? And, and this was uh, a moment in time that this was ex extremely beautiful. So many amazing sunsets. And I, I really started thanking God that I had the opportunity to be on a boat and to be able to do this kind of thing where many people, other people don't have those opportunities. So yeah, this was, this was uh, just a beautiful sunset given to us by God. Lou, I'm sorry. Did you say that's Newport? That's uh, that's uh, Long, uh, Beach? Long Beach. Long Beach. Oh, Long, Long Beach. Beach. Okay, I yeah. gotta get up there. Um, they have yeah. a really good restaurant, the um, Alice Point. Actually, it's a it's a brewery. Uh, but if you've ever been, if you've uh, you ever get uh, up to Ballast Point, Blue, do not yeah. get. They have like I, a habanero blend beer. Don't get it. <laughs> Just don't oh, do it. No. <laughs> I was like, oh, that yeah. sounds good. No, 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 Allie, it's not. I mean, it's not horrible, but I mean, if you're into hot, whatever, beer, no, don't get me hot started. Hot beers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, so let's, um, let's, let's kind of stay on that, that theme there. Because I always see this and I get hungry. I'm like, oh, what are you doing, Blue? You are a very accomplished angler. Uh, angler and I think your, your sons uh, actually join you quite a bit, don't they? Yeah, uh, I have uh, several sons, and, and uh, some of them are, uh, Brandon is a, a, an avid fisherman. I've been taking and fishing since he was four years old, and now he shows me how to fish. This guy is, just, he's in his 40s now, and uh, an amazing fisherman, and he and I were out that day. He took this image of me, and uh, I think we caught, uh, 
man, I, I'm not, I think I caught like 30, 30 to 40 of these uh, calico bass that, that day. And it was so much fun. That was on the wall in Long Beach. And there's a, there's a uh, break wall that goes all the way up. It's about, uh, I would say it's about five, six miles. I'm not sure exactly how long, but pretty, pretty way, uh, ways up there. Mm -hmm. um, and we fished all day there and it was so much fun. And it's such a great moment. And I'm just noticing in this image, my right hand with the, uh, the ring that I have on there is, uh, that was uh, my father's. And when really? He passed, yeah, when he passed away, and he used to be a fisherman. Tell him what happened one time when you were that fishing, oh or you were cleaning God. fish. So sometimes, I don't wear it all the time, but I was wearing it that day, but I, I used to wear it quite a bit, because uh, uh, I didn't always want to remember my father, and, uh, and that means a lot to me. So uh, I had caught some tuna that day, not this particular day, but what the story she's talking about a few years ago. Long story short, we're cleaning tuna over. We're cleaning tuna, cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. And uh, afterwards, we were cleaning up and I washed my hands and, you know, make sure to get that stink off your hands and everything. And so I washed them again, make sure. Well, the next day, I, I was going like this and I go, oh, what the hell? I still smell that fish. I still smell fish. I wash my hands. Yeah. So I wash my hands again. I'm going like, God, everybody's my my face, wash my face off really good and everything. Smelling around. Smelling around. I go, what the hell? I keep smelling that and fish. It's, and dead, like, yeah. fish yeah. that after, is gone after bad. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, you know, I go I go the next day. And um, uh, next day, and I'm, you know, I go like this. And I go it. like, what the hell? I what still smell it. Still smell the fish. I go, this is the next day. And then another day. And then the third day. And then a the fourth day. And I'm going, are you kidding me? I cannot get this damn stink off my hand. It's crazy. It's carcass. And it's getting worse and worse. And it's just pretty disgusting. I'm, I'm almost putting bleach on my hands. Well, I go, what the heck? I took my ring off. Uh -huh. And there was a little tiny piece of tuna stuck to the inside oh, of the back of my ring. And oh, my God. The third day it was like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so I can tell you so many different stories that's happened to us fishing. So when you wore that ring, but, I but when I put that, that yeah, when I wore that ring again, Alice goes, "Remember the time you?" And, <laughs> so I, it's a. Uh, that's a great that's, story. Oh my God! Oh, thanks, Blue. That's that's one of my pa that's one of my passions though is is fishing and. and yeah, hey, Blue. Enjoy that. I was gonna make bang bang shrimp tonight for dinner, but I may <laughs> may change that now. <laughs> <laughs> um, Let's go. And believe it or not, I still love tuna and tuna melts and all that kind of stuff too, especially when it's fresh. There's some amazing gigantic tuna out there today. Now nowadays, uh, they're they're beautiful, 300, two, 300 pound tuna. So we are running up on the top of the hour. This goes really quick, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 Um, so you guys sent me quite a few images. Uh, do you guys feel like I I missed any, or there's like one that you think you'd like me to talk about? Allison, anything else that you? No, yeah, you yeah. can. She's got so many amazing uh, images that she's taken uh, over the years of herself. I think it's like, God, it's I've been got a, uh, probably about 150 chameleon shoots I've done. Yeah. And uh, it's been, each one of them is unique and each one of them is uh, thought out well and, uh, and finished fantastically. So if you want to see more of those images, you can go to her my web page. Her web page and yeah, go ahead. Uh, AllieCotton.com. And that, that's a, thank you for bringing that up. So in the uh, description for this event, uh, if you guys go there, uh, there's a link to No Kid Hungry. Um, there's also a link to the Roosters Foundation where you can make donations. Um, Allison's website, Blue's website. Uh, they are still active photographers, which is actually kind of a neat way to kind of close. Um, you guys are still, you know, trying to make a living during COVID-19 when everything's locked down. I mean, it's a it's a people business. How are you guys? How are you guys managing? What are you What are you doing? It don't come easy. Yeah. Uh, we work so much with people. Uh, when the COVID thing happened, we lost uh, quite a few of our corporate jobs. Matter of fact, just about ninety nine percent of them uh, are all it, pushed to the next year. Yeah. But that doesn't help us this year. So we, we basically, um, we're doing the wind down Wednesdays to keep in touch with people who want to um, still see our artwork. Um, now that things are opening up, I'm getting senior portraits in because the seniors without their graduations, they need something special. Yeah. So we're creating like this afternoon, we have a senior portrait going on mm -hmm. for a client. Um, and then also headshots. Everyone's now doing 
digital connections, everyone needs a great new headshot to, to represent themselves. So, so we're, we're doing headshots. Doing more and more of that. More, at, at this point, more of an individual basis, not so much on the corporate end of it. Yeah. But I'm sure when that opens up again, we'll yeah. be doing more of that. Uh, so our social um, photography is pretty much gone on for right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And hopefully that'll come back yeah. soon. Uh, but, but then we do, uh, Allison had uh, asked me the other day, actually about a month ago, if uh, if she, it'd be cool if she did some um, uh, porch portraits. Porch traits, yes. Yeah. So yeah. we've been been doing some friends, family portraits, uh, long distance with my long lens and with film, which is actually kind of fun. Something different. I'm you know shooting film. Mm -hmm. So I think keeping the creativity flowing during. The, I I think this our extra bonus time. It's the great pause for people who are safely in their homes and have uh, nothing to do, they this is the time that they can figure out how to go beyond the box of their world yeah. and get creative and do new things. Take this time, this is a bonus time for many people. Mm -hmm. And I'm, um, I'm taking full advantage of it and so is Blue with his cooking and his creativity on that end. Maybe another time we can go over some of the recipes and things that we've done with our uh, cooking abilities on both both of us and and uh, mm -hmm. it's been a lot of fun to be, be able to create some different dishes and to work with our trigger uh, um, smoker and our, our Coleman's mm -hmm. um, barbecue and, and all the different things that we do that's another avenue to go down maybe another time actually what I just heard you say blue and Allie we're gonna do this again good oh that would be we great that. that'd be awesome so we are at the top of the hour. Um, just real quick, guys, I got to plug it just because it's important. The reason that I'm doing this is to stay in touch with my friends and uh, you know, obviously get to know people a little bit more and share some of my experiences in my very long career in the camera world. Um, no Kid Hungry, please go donate a little. And as I said, or a lot. Um, Roosters Foundation. Um, there's a link there. As make a donation there if you would. Great, great organization that Blue is uh, a member of. Um, and then finally, um, there's a link to my YouTube channel. Help me keep this going, the momentum going. Um, I'm still working from home, and we'll likely uh, open up hopefully pretty soon. Uh, and I intend on you know continuing to do this as you know Blue and Allie just said they're going to do another one with me, right? Yeah, we definitely will. With us. You know, Chris, I just, we didn't get a really chance to say how much you are near and dear to our heart. Yeah. And have always been an amazing help with our lives. Mm -hmm. and Good friends. A, a really great friends. And when we, we work together, uh, it's, it's just, it's magic. And we really, really appreciate all you've done in our lives uh, as well. Mm -hmm. And um, it's been a pleasure to just be a part of this. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thanks. Uh, thanks a lot, Blue. I love you guys and um, have a beautiful rest of your Sunday. Love you, you too. guys. God bless. Okay. God bless. Bye-bye.